Hi there. Well, it's kind of a pity that um, I feel I need to uh, make this post today, but given the horrific past week in my country and even this morning with the murder of eight innocent people, I'm sure that, um, like myself, every sane thinking American is, is upset and concerned and somewhat depressed, angry. These are all the feelings I'm having. But I'm making this video mainly to address um, younger dancers or their parents that have been maybe watching some of the things I've been posting. And uh, hopefully we'll put some of this in perspective. I've been around a long time. I've seen lots of horrific things happen in my country and elsewhere, but directly in my country. This is one of the worst. This division between people, between our political parties is, it's not unprecedented, but it's close. And it can make you very, very concerned about your future. So what I'd like to concentrate on is to try to put some of it in perspective, which is another reason why I personally believe the arts are so important. And as I said in my last posting, the arts seem to transcend time, politics, history. They can be eternal as long as there is any kind of a civilization and mankind. I don't want to get too deep in it, but I, I just wanted you to understand that if you're a dancer or any artist, but as a dancer, you are very lucky you have a great gift. You have something to hold on to. So when it looks like the sky is falling and everybody hates each other, even though that may be true, it will pass. And you have the opportunity to go into a studio and put all that outside the door. And when I take class and I do bar still as many times as I can, it's like therapy for me personally. It's like meditation. The minute I touch the bar, stand in first position, start to do a plie, no matter how bad it is, I'm in touch with something bigger than myself. Now, I want to speak a little bit of how Balanchine felt about politics. As you know, we had a personal relationship. He took me out to a, too many private dinners to even talk about. Uh, we would both drink. He taught me how to drink red wine, which I've not stopped since. And uh, once in a while, he would veer into his personal life and he would open up a little bit. And Balanchine was very apolitical. And the reason for this was because of his background. He was, I think, 13 or 14 when the Russian Revolution happened in 1917. He told me horror stories of what was going on in the streets. And so did Danilova. Alexander Danilova, who was a few years older than him, was his best friend, future ballerina, future common law wife. And she too took me to a lot of dinners when I first went to New York, private dinners. And she discussed a lot of Balanchine's youth and her youth. And the stories they told me of what went on in Russia during the Russian Revolution, that they lived through it as a miracle, that anybody lived through it as a miracle. So I think that colored him a bit about how he viewed politics and what he would call this world, which he said is not the real world. He said the real world is somewhere else and it can be expressed through arts and dance. And I've talked about that before. It's, it's, it's very actually Taoist. Um, you know, the Tao saying, if you know about the Tao, you don't speak about it. And if you speak about it, you don't know it. It can only really be experienced. And that's a bit how Balanchine felt about the real world versus this plane of existence, this earthly plane of existence. He said, this isn't real. The other one is the real world. So I don't want to get off track here, but Balanchine was not political, although he was um, a rebel. I mean, the fact of putting Arthur Mitchell, a black American male, on stage with Diane Adams, who was Lily White, and a very cool style dancer in a very sexually charged pas de deux in Egon in 1957. That was before the Civil Rights Movement. That was a political act, and he knew it. He was no fool. 
but he expressed his politics through his art and he didn't speak about him. And those in the nonprofit world in America are not supposed to have a political opinion anyway. You're not supposed to alienate any donors, etc., and keep your mouth shut. I'm not in the nonprofit world at the moment. My productions are for profit. But given that I've kind of thrown my hat in the ring to go back into the nonprofit world, I just will be quiet about my view of politics and what's going on. I'm sure you can imagine. I don't have to say anything. But as far as balancing went, the arts are separate because they're of the other world, the real world. Whether it's up there, it's out there. That's what we do as artists, as dancers. That's what we concern ourselves with. As human beings, or as American citizens, of course we have to be concerned about the politics going on in our country and we can express that individually. But as dancers, we are very fortunate because we belong to the other world. And this horrific hate that's going on in my country right now, I believe will pass. I hope it'll pass quickly. Even if it doesn't, there's instances throughout history of the arts surviving, sometimes even flourishing, but surviving definitely in the worst of times, the worst dictatorships, the worst tyrants. Um, the Medicis weren't saints, <laughs> but Michelangelo da Vinci survived. The Renaissance happened during the de Medicis. So, um, and they were, from all reports, could be pretty ruthless rulers. I'm not excusing anything that's happening, but I'm just saying that as artists, we can take some solace in the fact that we have our art. And that's not to be sniffed at. That's really kind of profound. We're very lucky people. And Alicia Alonso, you know, danced with my company, and, and she was telling me things during the Castro Revolution, and how she, of course, was aware of everything, but her eye was on developing a ballet company, giving the youth of Cuba something artistic to strive for that was outside the realm of the daily horrible politics that were going on under the Castro regime. So she used her position. Some were upset with her for playing nice with Castro, but she used her position to actually better her world and to better the Cuban people and to better the Cuban dancers at that time. So, you know, did she make a deal with the devil? Possibly. Did some composers working under Hitler and some singers, there's, I won't go into it, but there's some singers that supposedly, and conductors that were playing it with Hitler, kind of, you know, to get by. Um, I'm not going to damn them, because I think they were doing the best they could under the circumstances that they were trying to survive and keep the art alive. In a perfect world, you know, one wouldn't have to do that, but it's never been a perfect world. It'll never be a perfect world until we're all machines, androids, and then who knows. But given this horrible week, I was very upset. And then to wake up this morning to the horrible news, 9-11 was bad enough. And a lot of you were too young. A lot of the dancers in New York City Ballet were too young to really experience what happened on that day. But it scarred our country. It scarred all of us. But we're still here, and we have to try to look on the bright side. Uh, things will get better. The arc of history has shown that things get better. Sometimes it takes 100 years, but the arc of history has shown that for humanity in general, the big picture, things do get better, and they're trending always to the good side. Now, that may not help you feel better tonight, but it's something to kind of look forward to. I've been through assassinations, the Kennedys, Martin Luther King, you know, it's, it's, I was drafted and I had to get out of it, I did, luckily, otherwise I'd probably be dead. So, you know, th horrible things happen and this is a horrible period, but I'm going to stay an optimist and I'm going to think that things will get better. And I did a bar today and I felt better. And I'm going to do another one tomorrow and I will feel even better. So if any of the young dancers or their parents or they're concerned, which I'm sure everybody is, be concerned 
vote, please. However, go to class, do your bar. Remember that that is your anchor. That is your lodestar, as they say. Don't mean to preach, just trying to help because I know I was feeling terrible and I was guessing that a lot of other people have been feeling pretty bad too. So this is just my word of advice and how Balanchine looks at these things and Danilova and Alicia Alonso and I'm sure thousands of other artists that have had to survive bad times. You just keep your eye on your art and that's the best you can do and it'll save you and it could save the planet. Think of what Margot Fontaine had to go through during World War II with bombs going off over her head and the theater closing down and the performance going on an hour later. We haven't gotten there yet. So count our lucky stars. We'll get through this. I feel like Yoda. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye.